Plugins in Sublime Text are all around us. They're in the packages that ship with Sublime, they're in packages that you install, and as you move forward in your Sublime Text usage and customize it to your particular liking, you may run across plugins on the internet as well that you'd like to use in the forum and whatnot. The question becomes, how do we use one of these plugins? Not to worry, because today we're going to tell you exactly how to do that. Hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odan Nerd here, and welcome to this week's video where we're going to be talking about plugins in Sublime Text and how you actually use them. Now, it may come as a bit of a surprise, but a lot of the core functionality in Sublime actually comes from plugins that are in the packages that come with it as you install it. And of course, you can use package control in order to install other third-party packages which increase the functionality of Sublime Text yet again. Sometimes, though, you may just have a, a little tweak that you'd like to make or something of that nature, and often when you look around, you ask a question on the forum or stack overflow or in the discord or sometimes even in the issue tracker you may find someone saying that your problem can easily be solved or be customized by way of a small simple little plugin it's pretty common to run across these if you're in the sublime text ecosystem the question then becomes how do you actually use a plugin in the first place this is very easy to describe and first we're going to talk about what a plugin actually is to make sure that we're all on the same page first of all a plugin in sublime text is a python script that's written to talk to the sublime text api because this is python it's important that the file have a dot py extension otherwise sublime's not going to be able to detect that it's supposed to be a plugin and it will ignore it the name of the file can be absolutely anything you like whether you're the one that's writing it or you're the one that's putting it in place if someone else provided one the name doesn't matter so choose a name that will allow you to know what that plugin is actually for when you see it inside of the list of files. And most importantly, this plugin needs to be in the root of a package. And in order to know where to put one of these files, it's very easy to do. All you have to do is go into the command palette or the menu, choose preferences, browse packages, and what Sublime will do is open the packages folder directly in the file manager of your operating system. The beauty of this is that it'll work across Windows, Mac OS, Linux, no matter how you installed your copy of Sublime Text, where it's installed, this will give you the packages folder. This is one of the places that packages can be installed in Sublime Text, so don't be surprised if you don't see the same sort of things in yours as you see here, or that you have packages installed that don't appear in this folder. Nothing to be concerned about here, but this is the the folder where you want to put your plugin. Now you need to put it inside of a folder in here. If you're customizing your copy of Sublime Text, then probably you want to put this directly inside of your user package. That way when you synchronize your copy of Sublime Text in configuration across multiple systems, your plugins that you use to configure things will go along with it. If you like, you can just create a folder directly inside of this packages folder and put your plugin in there as well. But that would make things a little bit harder to sync. Now, as a pro tip here, you may find yourself wanting to access these folders on a regular basis. And instead of having to use Sublime Text to get at them, you can actually make your operating system work for you because most operating systems file managers have an ability to pin frequently asked folders. So what you could do is access that inside of your operating system, get it to pin the folder that you're interested in. It usually goes into a sidebar or such. And then anytime you want to put a file in that location or easily look at it, you don't have to fire up Sublime Text first, which can be a great time saver. Now we know what a plugin is and we know where to put one. It's pretty easy to take plugin code from off of the internet and actually put it in place in our copy of Sublime. All you have to do is copy it, paste it into Sublime Text and save it as a Python file into an appropriate location, which again would be to user package or somewhere else. We can give this any name that we like, but it has to have the Py extension. It has to be in the root of the package or Sublime is not going to recognize that it's a plugin and we're good to go. This works, but of course it yeah, a little bit uh, a little bit of a niggly operation, but Sublime will actually make our lives even easier because if we were to use tools developer new plugin from the menu, what we end up with is a stub tab that contains a plugin inside of it. And much like you can do this with a build system in order to make a build system a lot easier, the same thing applies to plugins as well. Note this this file already has a stub plugin inside of it. It's got the correct syntax highlighting. We can just replace this code with the plugin code that we're interested in. Most importantly, when you save, it'll automatically open all on the user package so you don't have to navigate to anywhere and just like that your plugin is totally in place. Now if you want to make sure that you actually did this correctly there's a couple of things that we can do here. If you use the view menu you can pick the show console item. You can also use the key binding that's associated with this as well. That's going to open the console down at the bottom of the window. There's a couple of things to look for here. The first is that anytime Sublime loads a plugin or reloads it when it is saved there's going to be a message in the console that says that that plugin is being reloaded. So if you don't see a message there that matches the name of the file that you just created 
then you did not put this file in the appropriate place. It's either not inside of a package or it doesn't have a Py extension or it's not in the root of the package. And if you don't see this reloading message, move the file until you actually see it and then you'll know what's good. And of course, you want to make sure that you don't see any sort of error messages in here because if there's a problem compiling the Python code, the plugin won't work either. But that is all there is to using a plugin in Sublime Text. Now you know exactly what you need to know to take those cool plugins off of the forums and the discords and the what for and get your copy of Sublime Text working exactly the way that you'd like it to work. And if you'd like to create your own plugins at Sublime Text, check down in the description of this video because I have a link to the Plugin 101 playlist teaching you how to become a package and plugin author in Sublime Text. While you're going down there, you might want to use the buttons to thumb subscribe and share and ring the bell notification icon to be told about future tutorials. And until then, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.